In DaVinci Resolve's color page, there is a myriad of tools and parameters that one can use to correctly adjust and grade their image. Some tools like the color temperature adjustment pretty much do one thing and one thing only. However, there are other tools that can become quite confusing to use, making you ask, what the hell are you talking about? For example, and for the focus of today's video, there are not one, but four ways to adjust the brighter parts of your image within the primaries panel. We have the gain adjustment on the primaries wheel panel, another gain adjustment on the primary bars, a highlight control on the log panel, and then a highlight slider on the bottom of the panel, which extends across the three individual panels. And as the bars and the color wheels work in the same fashion for today, we're just gonna focus on the color wheels, the log wheels, and the highlight slider. So let's have a look at all three in action. We have this shot of a woman holding a handheld recorder. The image is pretty nice, but in that left corner, it's slightly too hot. So let's look at lowering the brightness values using these three methods. Here, I'm gonna just use the gain. Okay, very good. Over to the log wheel. All right, reset that. And then the highlight slider. Okay, so yeah, as we can see, all three methods all lower the brighter values of the image, but they do so in different ways. So first, let's have a look at the color wheels versus the log wheels and see how these differ from one another. And I'm also gonna bring up this graph so we can see how the wheels work exactly. So with the gain, as noted in the graph, we can see that it primarily controls the overall brightness or the luminance of the entire image, but it extends across all tonal regions. So when you reduce the gain, it's not just the brighter areas that we are adjusting, but we are globally darkening or brightening the entire image, but from the top of the luminance scale. So this adjustment affects not only the highlights, but the midtones and the shadows working our way down. And if we go back to the image, you can see that we actually make the image completely black by lowering the gain. So in a way, yes, it does control the brighter parts of the image. So if you have something too bright, this can fix it, but it does also affect the overall exposure of your video, making it brighter or darker as needed, but from the top. Now, if we have a look at the graph for the log color wheels, we can see that the highlight controls do not intersect nearly as much, in fact, if at all. So when you reduce the highlight wheel in the log tab, you are specifically targeting and adjusting only the brightest of the highlights or the brightest parts of your image. And usually this adjustment is gonna be used for fine tuning the highlights without significantly affecting the midtones or the shadows. It allows you to retain more detail in the brighter parts of your image as if we make a large adjustment with the log wheel, we can see here that it zaps all highlight information out of the image and in the scopes, we can now see it's flatlined. So the key difference lies in the scope of the adjustment and the tonal range they will affect. So what about the highlight slider? Because wasn't that just doing the same thing? Well, yes, but it's actually more of a mix of both how the gain and the highlight color wheels operate. So the manual says, the highlight slider makes it easy to selectively retrieve blown out highlight detail in high dynamic range media by lowering this parameter and achieves a smooth blend between the retrieved highlights and the unadjusted midtones for a naturalistic result. Interesting, but that doesn't really tell us how it works and what it does. So to see how the highlights work, let's go to this grayscale. And in the waveform, we can directly see every incremental step up from black to gray to white. Now, if I lower the highlight log wheel, we know that this should really just affect the brighter region of the image. And it does, we can see, as I adjust this highlight wheel, there's a slight curve to the adjustment, which is better for rolling off highlight adjustments, but it gets to the point where the curve becomes horizontal and we've washed out our highlights completely and the area becomes gray. So as noted earlier, this is great for fine tune adjustments. With the gain wheel, we know that this should also adjust the entire image by starting from the brighter region. And it does, as seen in the scopes and the grayscale itself. The brightest parts of the image gets adjusted first and also remain last upon the crushing of all image data. And we can see that the gain wheel adjusts the information linearly. Now the highlight slider does something interesting. It moves both like the gain and the highlight wheel. As you can see in the scope, the highlight slider does slightly adjust all tonal regions like the gain wheel, but with the brighter region, 
being the most dominated adjustment like the log wheel. But unlike those two, it creates a nice curve after the midtone region into the highlights. This is very important information because when correcting elements that are too hot, like the sky, the adjustment is going to gradually roll off and will keep details nicer than soft clipping in many situations. So with this visual information from the curve created on the grayscale graph and with what is stated in the manual, we can see that this highlight slider may serve its best interests when used to smooth blown out areas of the image. Now let's put this into practice. So we're gonna to go to this shot. The sun is in the background. And when I reduce the gain, or then the highlight wheels, the result I'm getting isn't that pleasing. But when I reduce the highlight slider, we're lowering the highlight region, but we're not doing so linearly. And as a result, we're getting this nice smooth roll off into the sun. And this is where the highlight slider works best. However, it is worth noting that there will be a difference in some of the image attributes when using the highlight slider. For example, let's go back to our, our original shot and compare between the gain adjustment and the slider adjustment for the highlights. If you notice, there is an increase in saturation and sharpness for the highlight slider adjustment. And this is because the highlight slider, as well as the shadow slider, as spatial tools. This means that they will uniformly impact all color channels in an image, and their spatial nature implies that they consider neighboring pixels when applied. So when strong settings are used, high contrast edges can lead to the introduction of halo artifacts, and likewise, it can modify the image's perceived sharpness as a result of this spatial processing. Now, with all of this information, you should now know how each tool works. And while they serve to adjust the brighter areas of the image, they all do so in their own individual fashion, which will produce different results. And like most creative elements, they might produce the best results when used collectively. All right, I have been Lewis with Fidevo. Subscribe for some more DaVinci Resolve content, and we'll catch you guys next week.